Good day, I'm Twyla Whelan and this is your JIS News for Monday, March 4, 2024. Government has signed a trilateral partnership agreement with the Federal Republic of Brazil and Japan to explore different approaches to community policing. The agreement for the implementation of the Jamaica Capacity Building on the Community Policing Coban System was signed on Friday at the Ministry of National Security. It involves the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, the Brazilian Cooperation Agency and Military Police of the State of Sao Paulo working with the Jamaica Constabulary Force. The partnership is intended to complement the model used by members of the JCF. Permanent Secretary Ambassador Alison Stone Roof asserts that by strengthening community policing, the intervention will also aid community development. This, she says, is particularly important in areas affected by rampant criminality, gang warfare, escalating violence, murder, and a general threat to public order. Fifteen members of the JCF are to spend a two-week period in Brazil this month, representing the first cohort of officers that will receive training under the program. Court reporting is set to improve with the recent acquisition of new stenography machines and laptops. The items valued at $30 million were donated by the Canadian government under the Social Justice Project. They were handed over to the Court Administration Division and the Justice Training Institute in a function held at the University of the West Indies Regional Headquarters in Mona last Friday. Acquisition of the machines is expected to strengthen training and the engagement of court reporters and transcriptionists who take verbatim notes and prepare transcripts of court proceedings. Minister of Justice Delroy Chuck says the donation and training will ensure greater efficiency in the legal system by enhancing case flow management and case resolution through the courts. There's no doubt that especially at the Court of Appeal level, we have a problem in getting transcripts and it is because of the shortage of not only the equipment, but also the court reporters. We want to move into the technological age. The court system has to improve. Similar sentiments were expressed by Chief Justice Brian Sykes. Having an accurate court record is indispensable at all times, but particularly now where we are more rights sensitive. And so what we want to do is to change the way in which records are managed within the courts. The Canadian High Commissioner to Jamaica says the support represents another substantive milestone in Canada's ongoing commitment to assist Jamaica in advancing justice and upholding the rule of law. These advancements will bring about several benefits. Firstly, they will expedite Expedite, expedite, expedite the legal process by providing judges, lawyers, and other stakeholders with easy access to accurate records, thus reducing delays and backlogs in cases. Additionally, they will enhance transparency and accountability, allowing for thorough review and scrutiny of court proceedings. Minister of Finance and the Public Service Dr. Nigel Clark says there has been a massive increase in efficiency and security for the operations of government following ICT transformation in the sector. He was speaking during a tour of the eGov upgraded data center on Thursday. Dr. Clark points out that over the past four years, the Transformation Implementation Unit has been working with eGov to make ICT transformation in the public sector a reality. Jamaica wins when we have an efficient data center that can provide software as a service, uh, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, that the people in ministries, departments and agencies can do their jobs without having to worry about those details. And we have a strategic focal point that worries and is concerned about uh, those kinds of details. While commending the eGov team, Dr. Clark offered further support to acquire the resources needed to shore up operations. The Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce is engaging public dialogue as it moves to revise the national entrepreneurship policy. A successful consultation was held recently in Kingston as part of the dialogue, along with a micro-business pitch competition. Portfolio Minister Senator Aubin Hill says the consultations are a significant part of ensuring the policy reflects the latest trends and effectively addresses the evolving needs of the micro, small and medium-sized enterprise MSME sector. It has to be inclusive. It has to be responsive to the evolving needs and challenges faced by MSMEs 
in Jamaica. The National Consultation Workshop attracted over 140 attendees, including entrepreneurs, industry representatives, and policymakers who engaged in constructive dialogue, collaboration, and the sharing of valuable insights. 35 businesses were shortlisted from 89 applicants for the Micro Business Pitch Competition. Ten of them emerged victorious with the first five receiving $300,000 each and the other five getting $100,000. And finally, the Ministry of Health and Wellness will be engaging a corporate head chef who will be charged with teaching Jamaicans how to prepare healthy and affordable dishes using local foods. Portfolio Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton made the announcement at a recent Pan-American Health Organization PAHO Stakeholder Forum held at the Spanish Court Hotel in New Kingston. He says the move is aimed at promoting healthy eating to reduce the prevalence of non-communicable diseases, NCDs. Dr. Tufton reveals that the corporate chef will be tasked with training hospital chefs and cooks across the health regions and showcasing healthy meal preparations at schools and community events. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Twyla Whelan. Thanks for watching.